Story number 12 of Hurlbut's Story of the Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Hurlbut's Story of the Bible by Jesse Lyman Hurlbut, Part 5. Daniel in the Den of Lions. Daniel 6. 1 to 28. The lands which has been the Babylonian or Chaldean Empire now became the Empire of Persia, and over these Darius was the king. King Darius gave to Daniel, who was now a very old man, a high place in honor and in power. Among all the rulers over the land, Daniel stood first, for the king saw that he was wise and able to rule. This made the other princes and rulers very jealous, and they tried to find something evil in Daniel, so that they could speak to the king against him. These men knew that three times every day Daniel went to his room and opened the window that was toward the city of Jerusalem, and looking toward Jerusalem made his prayer to God. Jerusalem was, at that time, in ruins, and the temple was no longer standing, but Daniel prayed three times each day with his face toward the place where the house of God had once stood, although it was many hundreds of miles away. These nobles thought that in Daniel's prayers they could find a chance to do him harm, and perhaps cause him to be put to death. They came to King Darius and said to him, All the rulers have agreed together to have a law made that for thirty days no one shall ask anything of any god or any man except from you, O king, and that if any one shall pray to any god or shall ask anything from any man during thirty days except from you, O king, he shall be thrown into the den where the lions are kept. Now, O king, make the law and sign the writing, so that it cannot be changed, for no law among the Medes and Persians can be altered. The king was not a wise man, and being foolish and vain, he was pleased with this law which would set him even above the gods. So, without asking Daniel's advice, he signed the writing, and the law was made, and the word was sent out through the kingdom that for thirty days no one should pray to any god or ask a favor of any man. Daniel knew that the law had been made, but every day he went to his room three times and opened the window that looked toward Jerusalem and offered his prayer to the Lord, just as he had prayed in other times. These rulers were watching nearby, and they saw Daniel kneeling in prayer to God. Then they came to the king and said, O King Darius, have you not made a law that if any one in thirty days offers a prayer, he shall be thrown into the den of lions? It is true, said the king. The law has been made, and it must stand. They said to the king, There is one man who does not obey the law which you have made. It is that Daniel, one of the captive Jews. Every day Daniel prays to his God three times, just as he did before you signed the writing of the law. The king was very sorry for what he had done, for he loved Daniel, and he knew that no one could take his place in the kingdom. All day, until the sun went down, he tried in vain to find some way to save Daniel's life. But when evening came, these men again told him of the law that he had made, and said to him that it must be kept. Very unwillingly, the king sent for Daniel, and gave him order that he should be thrown into the den of lions. He said to Daniel, Perhaps your God, whom you serve so faithfully, will save you from the lions. They led Daniel into the mouth of the pit where the lions were kept, and they threw him in, and over the mouth they placed a stone, and the king sealed it with his own seal and with the seals of his nobles, so that no one might take away the stone and let Daniel out of the den. Then the king went again to his palace, but that night he was so sad that he could not eat, nor did he listen to music as he was used to listen. He could not sleep, for all through the night he was thinking of Daniel. Very early in the morning he rose up from his bed and went in haste to the den of lions. He broke the seal and took away the stone, and in a voice full of sorrow he called out, scarcely hoping to hear any answer except the roaring of the lions, 
o daniel servant of the living god has your god been able to keep you safe from the lions and out of the darkness in the den came the voice of daniel saying o king may you live forever my god has sent his angel and has shut the mouths of the lions they have not hurt me because my god saw that i had done no wrong and i have done no wrong toward you o king the king was glad he gave to his servants orders to take daniel out of the den daniel was brought out safe and without harm because he had trusted fully in the lord god then by the king's command they seized those men who had spoken against daniel and with them their wives and their children for the king was exceedingly angry with them they were all thrown into the den and the hungry lions leapt upon them and tore them in pieces as soon as they fell upon the floor of the den it was very cruel and unjust to put to death with these men their wives and children who had done no wrong either to king darius or to daniel but cruel and unjust as it was such things were common in all the lands of that part of the world the lives of people were but little cared for and children often suffered death for their parents crime after this king darius wrote to all the lands and the peoples in the many kingdoms under his rule may peace be given to you all abundantly i make a law that everywhere among my kingdoms men fear and worship the lord god of daniel for he is the living god above all other gods who only can save men and daniel stood beside king darius unto the end of his reign and afterward while cyrus the persian was king over all the lands daniel lived for a number of years after being saved from the lions he had several wonderful dreams and visions which showed him what would come to pass many years afterward and even to the coming of Jesus Christ. End of story number 12. Recording by Sean McGahey, ducttapeguy.net.